Hey, the time has come. The time has come to update the Seaside tier list. Now, before I did a tier list on Seaside First Edition, and uh, these were the results minus the cards that were removed from Seaside Second Edition. So you can go check out that tier list video if you want to hear any explanations of why things are where they are there. But we're just going to kind of get right into it now. I have barely played with any of these new Seaside cards. So these are hot takes right here. Um, <laughs> there's been a little bit of analysis I've followed on Discord, but not a whole lot that uh, I can kind of work into my thoughts here. But I'm going to do my best to go over th everything. All right. Well then. So it starts out uh, about the same as it is. Right? But, but our, our first card that we're going to run into here is the Corsair. And just to go over what it does, here it is. If it'll load up, if it'll load, okay. Yeah, it's a $5 action duration attack. This is the replacement for pirate ship. Um, it gives you two coins at the start of your next turn, you get a card. So right there, the, um, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. Um, you know, you, you get an, an extra card the next turn and some coin now. Until then, each other player trashes the first silver or gold they play each turn. So you still get the treasure trashing of pirate ship, but you do not um, get the whole game where you try to build up pirate tokens and then get them to pay off later. Instead, you just get some uh, decent economy early in the game. I think that's a good trade for the most part. Corsair is probably going to be better than pirate ship. I do think uh, pirate ship probably has games where it's better, but we're not really talking about pirate ship. Um, the five cost, I think, is a relatively steep for this card, and it's one of the things that I think holds it back a little. Like, if this costs four, you'd probably always open with it, but since it doesn't, um, you kind of got to make a decision about uh, when you want to get it there. Now, as for uh, where to place it, 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 it's been placed above island in the hot takes tier list, um, so it's kind of between C and B. Now, um, the main thing Corsair does is it prevents you from playing uh, silver and gold safely. Like, the actual economy that you get out of it, I think, is, like, nothing really to write home about. Yeah, nothing really to write home about. So, um, like, I, I lean toward putting it in the C tier. I could also see it in B, uh, down at the bottom of B. So I think like it just kind of depends on what you value. I personally am not like super scared of this card. I I think it's just going to be all right sometimes. Uh, like e because even if like you might say it's good because it can destroy a deck that uses treasures. Well, even if that's the case, someone could just buy Corsair and there they have something giving them a coin, right? So you know th there's kind of a built-in solution to that problem. So I think top of C tier is fine. I think there's going to be some times when it's useful, but I think it's also just going to be overshadowed by other fives quite a lot. All right. Well, the next card we need to look at then um, is Pirate. Pirate, uh, which is a nice fancy blue and orange card here. Uh, uh, nice to have like you know some people of like different complexions on Dominion cards, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're we're getting something here. All right. So five dollar action duration reaction. So, at the start of your next turn, you gain a treasure costing up to six to your hand. In other words, gold, although it could be any treasure, you know, so alternate treasures as well. And when any player gains a treasure, you can play this from your hand. Okay, um, you know, and I think that's a solid enough effect. Obviously, you want that to be the effect you're getting. You, you would like for this to be played on your opponent's turn. That way, uh, you're not using your action on pirate. However... Uh, like, if you need this effect, you're probably okay playing it on your turn as well. Uh, this is obviously the replacement for Explorer, which puts treasure in hand. Um, yeah, you know, you don't have to get a province to get your gold to hand with this one, so that's pretty nice. However, you know, treasure gain can only be so useful, I think, a lot of the time. Especially, like, if all you're doing is gaining the treasure to hand, it's not amazing. I still gain in play but it's not the best gain in play by any means, and I think it just ends up being kind of all right. Just just kind of all right. Like, yeah, you're going to use it in some kingdoms where you need to gain treasure like from mid to late game. 
but it's probably not going to be uh, amazing other than that. Um, yeah, if you can get your opponent to buy treasure for you, all so much the better, then I think Pirate's pretty strong. But I think a lot of times they're going to try to play around it and make you have to waste that action there. So this card was above um, Haven here in the B tier, and I don't know, I can see it as a B tier as well. I think that's probably about where it goes, although... You know, there's probably some like little differences in where things actually go. These, uh, you know, these takes were made just a few days after these cards were revealed. All right, our next card to look at it will be Tide Pools. Here's Tide Pools. Um, I think one of the more interesting cards in Second Edition. So uh, it's a four cost action duration. So you can open with it. You can get it like uh, at a relatively low cost there. Three cards in an action. Um, it's very nice, but at the start of your next turn, you discard two cards. So it's kind of like you got hit by Militia, although if you get hit by Militia, you'll be discarding down to one card from five. So <laughs> yeah, that's actually a, a slight weakness of this card, I would say. You want to be very careful when there are hand size attacks in the kingdom, and maybe just avoid this entirely. And honestly, that is a pretty big knock against it. So I think Tide Pools is probably at its best when you have duration draw in the kingdom, or something else guaranteeing that you're going to be able to draw your hand back up. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is just going to be all right. Probably just a linchpin to have every now and then to give you a little burst of draw. Playing a bunch of these, probably a good idea. Like getting more than one of them seems like a death wish <laughs> a lot of the time. But I found it to be like in the couple of times I've played with it now, um, decent supplemental draw. So yeah, nothing spectacular, but it can give you like a little boost uh, especially at the end of the game, like you don't really care if you have to discard then, especially if your deck's really been cooking or you have lots of green, you're going to have stuff to discard anyway, and then Tide Pools is pretty all right. So yeah, I think this card is overall okay. Uh, where was it ranked on the list? It was above Tactician, which yeah, is probably about where I'd put it. Probably about there in the middle of B. Uh, I like it. It's got strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, um, yeah, not an amazing card, but a pretty cool addition to the game. Uh, the next card we need to look at is Astrolabe. Astrolabe is a treasure duration, so not an action at all, it's a, it's a treasure. Um, basically, now and at the start of your next turn, um, plus coin, plus buy, so it's like you get that uh, candlestick maker or uh, duck it uh, this turn and next, only you know it's just a coin instead of a coin token. I think uh, there's nothing wrong with this card at all. Um, it's actually pretty good as far as just having a generic plus buy, because you're guaranteed to get it um, the second turn, right? So, yeah, it's pretty consistent. And, you know, that second turn, there's this extra treasure card that's not in your deck that you would have to draw, and, you know, not taking space in your initial hand, potentially. So that's pretty good. Um, but overall, like, I, I just feel like this is very average. It's very average. There's no way you could say this is, a, like, a great card. I think it's just decent. Is decent. Like, you're going to get it when you need a buy, and you're going to ignore it if you have better buys in the kingdom, probably. I think buying this just because on three is probably not the way to go. Like, silver is going to be uh, better often, maybe. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know if that's completely true. It's just, it feels that way to me. But I, I think this is an alright card. I don't have too much to say about it. Um, it's simple. It's nice to have new simple cards, honestly. Not every card needs to have, like, a gimmick to it, you know? Um, well, yeah, but it was here right above Tide Pools in the ranking, right below Smugglers, which I think makes sense, because I feel like Smugglers has a bit bigger of an effect on the game. All right, so the next card to look at is Sea Chart, and this one was a little controversial. There's some people who think this card is very bad, and <laughs> some who think it's uh, uh, rather good, or at least, like, okay. This was the replacement for Pearl Diver. So it's Cantrip for three. Reveal the top card of your deck. If you have a copy of it in play, put it into your hand. Obviously, this is um, much better if you have cards with multiple copies in your hand that C-Chart could be hitting. Unfortunately, it has a search space of one, so um, it's never going to be amazing. Like You're going to have to get decently lucky or have some kind of top decking going on to make it always draw. Um, However, I will say this, that um, if you get that card, um, it's pretty nice being able to draw it. Like It's basically a lab for three. Um, and you're really not out much if you buy this at three. A lot of the time it's going to be a better card to get than silver. So yeah, I think like it's going to be an okay card to pick up. It's not going to be like a game changer most games. 
but um, it slots nicely into most decks, I believe, since it's a cantrip. And um, yeah, not too much to complain about there. But I would say like it doesn't have too many award-winning synergies. It, like it can combo with itself, but all you're getting out of it is C charts, and you know they're not incredible. But I would say like any game where you're spamming a bunch of something like Will O Wisp, Wandering Minstrels, or something like that, this is gonna uh, turn to be a turn out to be a pretty good card. Wandering Minstrel, I think, is especially a pretty good um, a pretty good combo there. All right, so where is C Chart? It's it's gonna be here above Warehouse. Yeah, and I'm not sure I agree with that. I think Warehouse might be a little bit more impactful, but um, here we are. Here we are. All right, our next card is Blockade. We're moving right along here. There's not too many cards to look at. Uh, blockade is our replacement for Embargo. And I have something in front of my screen here blocking it, so I couldn't find it. <laughs> well, I think this is a neat card, although you know, I'm not really convinced of how strong it is. So you uh, gain a card costing up to four, setting it aside. So it's a workshop. Action duration, remember, so it's going to stay in play. All right, you can't use it every shuffle necessarily. So at the start of your, or every, I don't know, every shuffle, like if you overdraw, whatever. At the start of your next hand, you put the card that you gained into your hand, and when while it's set aside, if another player gains a copy of it on their turn, they gain a curse. So situationally, this could be very powerful, like if there's a, some critical card that you're gaining with blockade and making people gain curses for it, I'm going to be pretty strong, but if there are options on the board for other stuff they could get that's comparable or even better, then the blockade's not doing much for you other than being a workshop. Now, it, it does go into your hand, the card, so that's nice. Like, you're guaranteed to get it the next turn, and like I think that's like one of the better things about this card, honestly. Like, it's a pretty good workshop variant. Like, the cursing just kind of icing on the cake here. So it's a little different from Embargo, but um, I think it pulls off Embargo's thing a little bit better. It's only temporary compared to Embargo, but that's probably for the best, because often the problem with that card was you just didn't want to buy the card you blocked, and it might have been something you needed. But here, like you don't have to make that call, necessarily. I, mean, I think this is a uh, good card. Maybe not an incredible one. Maybe not incredible. Uh, where are we going to put it? Well, oh yeah, it has to go above Lighthouse, from the look of it. So in the A tier, and I'm not <laughs> super convinced that it belongs there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, super convinced it belongs there. But, well, here we are. But this is where it was put. And, you know, I think it can make, like, a pretty decent impact on the game, potentially. I just think a lot of the times, you know, not necessarily going to do that. But here we are. We, we might as well move on to the next one. There are three cards left. And so next is Sailor. Sailor, a uh, forecast action duration so it's it's non-terminal and once this turn when you gain a duration card you can play it um i think that uh situational obviously if there are other duration cards in the kingdom that could be pretty good um obviously like you buy a wharf play it immediately that's very very strong um gotta have the duration cards there in the kingdom though there are a lot of duration cards now to be fair so you're probably going to get this effect relatively often. And you can also use it with Sailor, which is not the worst thing. At the start of your next turn, you get two coin, and you can trash a card from your hand. Now that right there is a pretty good effect, because um, it's hand size neutral, right? Like, um, you, you start the next turn with normal five cards and can trash a card from your hand, so um, that's pretty good. Plus you get that coin to go with it. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything for you this turn unless you're gaining the duration, but uh, I think that's like a fair trade. Like it's a, uh, it's kind of a slow trasher in some ways since you have to wait a turn, but it's also sort of fast because you can buy better stuff while you're trashing um, since you're getting that economy there. So I think this is a very good card. I don't know about S tier. I think uh, there are other trashers that are going to be faster and maybe have a bigger impact on the game. But I think especially if you can make use of this on game duration effect, uh, Sailor's going to be really strong, and I would definitely put it in the A tier. Um, yeah, like I'm not, I, I'm going to have to play with it more to see just how strong it really is. But yeah, I agree with it being up here for sure, and it is ranked right above, uh, right below Lookout. There, um, I could see it being higher, honestly. But I'm going to have to play with it more to see. It is a duration, so it's going to miss some shuffles, and you're going to have to deal with that. But yeah, there you go. I think it's a good card. So next is going to be a monkey. 
Monkey is an interesting new card here. Oh, whoa, I don't want to make it... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to put it on my like list there. Okay, Monkey. <laughs> the art is a little bit terrifying. Yeah, so it's a three-coin action duration, so nice and affordable. And I have played with this one, like, a few times, and I found it to be very, very strong. So <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, so until your next turn, when the player to your right gains a card, plus one card. At the start of your next turn, a plus one card. So you always get a plus one card next turn. Which, I, which is important because you're not out a card from playing this. Um, but if your opponent gains anything at all, you're going to gain at least two cards for next turn. Um, and if they gain multiple cards, you're going to be gaining like uh, more than two cards, right? If you have multiple monkeys in play, you're going to get extra draw for all of those things that they gain. Um, so it can actually add up in be quite a bit of draw. And draw, of course, is very, very good. It's probably one of the best effects you're going to get in Dominion. This is a cheap source of it. Um, yeah, sure, the turn you play it, it does nothing, but it's such a strong duration effect that I think like this card is just very, very, very good. Um, bordering S tier, but I do think um, opponents sh can find ways to counterplay against the monkey, so it's not perfect or anything like that. And of course, it gives nothing on the turn you play it. So yeah, it's got like a few weaknesses there, but I think this is a very strong card you can splash into most decks. Um, yeah, and I think it's it's one to watch out for for sure. Uh, like it's one uh, you're gonna have to be you're gonna have to figure out how to deal with, I think, and make good use of. So yeah, it was ranked right below Fishing Village, which I think is probably where it goes as well. Although I could maybe see it going up with a little more practice with the card. Um, and yeah, that's Monkey. I, very good card. It's probably my favorite card out of these. Maybe Sailor. I don't know. Like I, I really like these two a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, the last card we got to look at is Sea Witch. Of course, you know we lost Sea Hag, but in exchange we got a card that is just way stronger than Sea Hag. It's just Sea Witch. Um, five cost, action, duration, attack. Um, amazing art. Yeah, probably one of my favorite pictures in all of Dominion. Honestly, I love the cloud background and everything, but, you know, I'm not really here to talk about art. So, it's plus two cards, just like Witch. Each other player gets a curse. Yeah, no penalty. Like, <laughs> I don't know, there's no game you gotta play or anything like that. They just get a curse. At the start of your next turn, you get plus two cards and discard two cards. Um, this is amazing, <laughs> frankly. Uh, yeah, okay, you get the draw, just like Witch gives you. The next turn, you get more draw. Sure, you have to discard, but you're not out any cards, okay? Like, you start at five, you go up to seven, you discard two. Um, yeah, that's a draw neutral effect there, and it gives you a little bit of filtering. Um, that's amazing. The only weakness of this card is that it's a duration, and so it's going to sometimes trigger shuffles and not end up in the current one. But I say, big deal, it is a cursor that draws. <laughs> um, yeah, no questions asked. And uh, that filtering effect, sure, like maybe it could trigger more bad shuffles, but it's also helping you smooth out your draws. So it's actually a good thing. Um, yeah, so I don't think that it's crippling in any way. I think this card is very, very good. It's uh, maybe better than where it's been ranked, honestly. Like, I don't think it's better than Worf. But uh, where it was ranked was below Outpost, and to be fair, like Outpost does uh, maybe have the most, the more significant effect on the game in big engines. But I honestly think, like turn to turn, Sea Witch might be stronger. Like it just, you know, if you take any random game of Dominion, you're probably going to always get Sea Witch and occasionally skip Outpost. So yeah, like I for sure would put it above Outpost myself, but I, I can see why it was ranked there as well. The um, ceiling for Outpost is a lot higher. And that's Seaside 2nd Edition. Um, those are the new cards. Um, I think they're interesting new cards. I think this is a big improvement on the original Seaside, personally. I know like some people weren't too happy to see Ambassador leave and things like that. But, um, you know, I, I would say give the new cards a chance. Um, give them more than just looking at them. <laughs> Actually play with them and see how uh, things play out. Because I, uh, I think this is a really cool update to Seaside. And the old cards are still there in some capacity. So, yeah, you can always go back and look at them, <laughs> you know, and play them in casual games as well. But, yeah, here's our tier list, three S tiers. Um, as I think, like, overall, we got a bit of a power buff to Seaside. Um, maybe, like, a slight one. A slight one. But overall, like, I think it's a better set of cards. Um, would be interested to know your thoughts as well. And I'll be covering the Prosperity 2nd Edition uh, soon also. Uh, all right, I'm signing off for now.